Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church of Sparks online worship service. We're glad you're here. The issue of women pastors is still in the news. Several years ago, our pastor shared what Southern Baptists believe regarding women pastors. We believe that while both men and women are gifted for service in the church, the office of pastor is limited to men as qualified by scripture. Certainly, if you believe the Bible teaches women can be pastors, then it's your prerogative to go to a church that has a woman pastor. Why, with our First Amendment, do people feel the need to infringe on those who believe otherwise? Let's respect each other's views. Listen to what Pastor Morley has to say about women as pastors. This is an audio, Words from Will. And as always, you can help us out by hitting the like button and subscribe. When you do, you'll be notified whenever we have other videos. Also, we're on Instagram and Facebook. Like and share and subscribe. I was going to speak about Southern Baptist history today, but I received a question on my statement that Baptists believe women are not to be pastors. And they wanted to know a specific scripture verse that taught that. There is perhaps no more hotly debated issue in the church today than the issue of women serving as pastors. The Bible teaches in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 12, 13, and 14, and I do not permit... I do not allow a woman to teach a man or have authority over a man but to be in silence. Here's the reason why, verse 13. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. That's why. This verse plainly teaches that a woman should not have authority over men should not serve as pastors over men, that is, exercise spiritual authority over them. Now, you might not like that, but there it is. But throughout the Bible, God always chose the men to lead and protect the women, whether it was Adam or Noah or Abraham or David. Now, there were exceptions to the rule in the case of Deborah, Miriam, and Huldah. Even at the cross, Jesus asked John to take care of his mother, Mary. The Bible teaches God created Adam first and then created Eve to be a helper for Adam. That order of creation has application for the Christian family. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is head of the church. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands. I would bet the people that don't agree with this verse also don't agree with the previous verses. I would ask, if the husband is to be the spiritual leader of the house, then how can a wife as a pastor be the spiritual leader of her husband? or other women's husbands. And then there's a passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, and it's not talking about husbands and wives. It says, But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of a woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. <coughs> you say, but what if my husband won't be the spiritual leader? Now listen, this is God's ideal. Many men are not the spiritual leaders of their home, so the wife has to be. But for a woman to be a pastor, then she would have to be given spiritual authority not only over other men, but her husband as well. And the Bible does not teach that. I don't have a problem with women teaching a class with men attending when that woman is under my authority as the pastor, and I've asked her to do that. She is not usurping authority. She is not taking that upon herself. I attend a class here on Sunday night where the woman's a teacher. 
That does not offend me. She's teaching the class because I asked her to teach. Now, I want to share a verse in Romans chapter 16. Unless you think Paul is some kind of a woman hater. He says in chapter Romans 16, I command to you, Phoebe, our sister. I approve to you, Phoebe, our sister, of course, as a Christian, who is a servant of the church in Centuria. And this word servant is the nor not the normal word for servant. It is the Greek word for deacon. It is saying... I approve to you, Phoebe, our sister, who is a deaconess of the church in Centuria. And maybe these men had problems with women, but Paul clears it up in verse 2. That you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and assist her. And I like my own translation better. You stand by her in whatever business she has need of you. For indeed, she has been a helper, and that is the word protector. This woman, Phoebe, has protected not only others, but Paul himself. So, he's telling these men in the church at Rome, who I expect had deacons, and he's telling them, you do whatever she asks you to do. Now, how can, how can she do that? Because she is under Paul's authority. Do you see where I'm coming from? Now that is the same with the women in this church in leadership positions. We have women leading music, Leanna and Jane. We have a woman educational director, Barb Harris. We have a woman uh, uh, church administrator, and Lori Stevens. How can they do that? They have authority over other men. Here's how. They are under the pastor's authority. They do. They are doing what I've asked them to do. <clears throat> and the Bible says in 1 Timothy 3.2, A pastor or a bishop must be the husband of one wife. And then in verse 5, For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? To me, that's pretty plain. The office of pastor is limited to men as qualified by Scripture. It doesn't say if a woman does not know how to take care of her house or rule her house. It's talking about a man. A man is to be a deacon. Now, if you disagree with these Scriptures, then next Sunday you're welcome to share Scripture from this pulpit and defend your view. But remember, the Bible is our authority not liberal reasoning. And I want scripture just like I gave you scripture this morning. This is one of the things that separates a Southern Baptist church from many other churches and other denominations. We hold to the Bible and what it teaches. We do not pick and choose or change because of the society we're living in disagrees with the Bible. <clears throat> when you say, and you might be out here, you're saying, well, preacher, I don't agree with you. Then I tell you, you, you are becoming your own authority. You see, instead of following the Bible, you, you are saying, no, no, I don't believe that. This is what I believe. So you're making yourself God. When you will not hold to the scriptures, then you are a, your own little God. And one final thing. This is talking about Christians in the church. It's not talking about women in our society. It's not talking about women police officers or women army officers or politicians. We have... Military women in this church. I think, uh, I think, uh, what's, uh, Trish. She's a gunny sergeant. If I'm in the Army and I'm a, I'm a sergeant or a corporal or a private, and Trish says, drop down and give me 20, I say, yes, sir. I drop down and give her 20. <laughs> she has authority over me. 
We have uh, several women who are police officers. Rob, your sister is a police officer. Um, and Jack and Jill Kearns, is, their daughter is a uh, Washoe County Sheriff. If she says, pull over, I pull over. She has authority over me. <coughs> this is for Christians in the church. And it is for Christians in this church. And if you can go to any church around. You can go to a church that has a homosexual pastor, has a woman pastor. Just find the church you want. But I'm telling you, this church is going to do its best to follow the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you disagree, I'm sure we'll all be excited to hear. 